You're like a fucking steam train, whatever it is. What's that? Puffin' Billy. Doot, doot. <laughs> anyway, we're getting the smoker going, so we can have a look at how these girls got over rope. Are looking after the after the blossom, and whether we're going to split them in half and see whether there's any any drones running around, um, because it's fractionally early here, but it's a good time to start looking at them. So I thought oh, I've got me got me trusty pine needles, so I give me smoker a bit of a light up. Yes, isn't it? Yeah, there's a bloke get himself into such a state of affairs. What have I got in here that I can use? There's a bit of a chainsaw or screw right there. Oh, what's this? Thing? That'll do. That's close enough. <sighs> My God, I had a couple of hive tools in the back of this ute, but we've just gone and got the battery for the camera, so we better not go for another drive to find a hive tool. So. I guess this is why beekeepers end up with several hundred of these bloody things. Because <laughs> they're scattered across the countryside somewhere. Anyway, this will do the job. Oh, makeshift hive tool. <laughs> you remember that we took the queen excluder out of these? So they should have formed a bit of a ball in the middle of the two two boxes. The other, what other beekeepers do, or you can, the other option, is you actually just put a nice mat through here, so you keep the gels down and they keep them all warm. But anyway, I'm going with this idea because I'm hoping that they've decided to make a round brood chamber, and we should have brood up the top and brood down the bottom, and then we can split them in halves, and then we can have two boxes out of one, since we want to expand the boxes more so than get um, oodles of honey. Although we probably should get some honey for you guys. And you wouldn't know what I just spied over in the corner of my eye. Have a look over there. Over here, I just spied where my hive tool is. It's safely put back in my ute from the other day. Goodness me. I suppose at least it got cleaned. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, let's have a look what happened. Let's see what's going on in here, shall we? Hopefully it's been successful. A little bit of moisture. Some ladies up the top. Beautiful spring day. My neighbour's out spraying if you're wondering what that woo in the background is. That's my job next week. Spraying the jolly trees again. This is probably not the ideal because they're not up here. They've all just stayed down the bottom. So they've just started to come up in a bit of a circle, but they haven't actually got any brood up here. So that one's not going to be what we want to do. But we would do that when it gets a little bit closer. Just at the minute, we don't want to pull them. We don't want to make the brood separate anyway, because it's too early for the drones. But they're nice and healthy underneath there, so this one's got a bit of honey. Oh, sorry chicks. I was talking to a beekeeper the other day and he was saying that the honey was that jolly hard that the ladies um, starved to death because they couldn't get the jolly honey back out of the out of the frame. Because it got a bit cold and of course it went solid as a rock. And so that'd suck, wouldn't it? Like a fridge. <laughs> you got a you got a fridge full of ice cream and you can't bloody eat it. <laughs> that'd be a bit shit. So he was a bit disappointed because, of course, when it's really cold in winter time, you just go along and you fill your box and see how heavy it is. And it was, of course, plenty heavy, but the girls couldn't get it, uh, couldn't get it at their own stores. So, anyway, been a beekeeper for years and you do learn shit, so <laughs> there's hope for me yet. And we'll just have a bit of a look. So we're just having a bit of a, this is just a bit of a pre-plan. So we know how many boxes to bring and which way we're gonna go. We're just going to get organised. Like I said, it's fractionally early to do this anyway, to, to actually implement it completely. Too early in spring to actually split the hives anyway, so but it's a good time to have a bit of a look and get a bit of a feel for where they are and what's going on and how they how they got through the spring. 
Well, how they got through the winter now. Pretty little ladies all in a row. Good thing about this time of year, they're that bloody busy they don't even know that we're here. <laughs> so these girls carried a bit of honey forward, so that's good. So we'll just have a, we'll have a bit of a dig around down here and see whether they've put a bit of brood up the top or not. We've got some nice stores still here, so that should be good. These girls should go into summer nicely. Maybe that plan didn't really work out. Anyway, it did work out in a way, they're still alive. <laughs> so we're still going to have to pull the bottom brood box apart. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we'll find, we, hopefully we'll find one that's actually done what I hoped it would do. Okay, you guys are angry, aren't you? Well, these girls are a bit more excited. Have a look what you girls are up to. Oh, full of almond blossom. Ah, here's what I was looking for. So they've come up into this area here where they've decided that they're going to make some brood. So the queen's come up and made a bit of a circle. It's over here a bit too. But if they, they've actually formed a bit of a nuclear circle like that in the middle of the box, which is really cool. And then my plan is that the ones that have done that will just take the top box off and put a, a um, separating board in the middle and then this top this box will become its own nest and so the bottom box will become its own nest and then they'll make a new queen in the one that hasn't got one if we depends on we might get real excited and find the queen and you know we'll know which box she's in then but either way a little bit later on they'll make a new queen the moment there's that's all capped brood so it's no good to anybody for making queens. Anyway, that's a nice bit of nice bit of brood going on there. So here we are, they're just making a few drone cells. They're already capped off, so they won't be far away. I'm just getting that one capped there. One there's done. One here's just getting built. Capped drone cells, which will be out and flying in a little while. And then they'll probably make a queen cell as well, because when they swarm, obviously they need a boy and a girl to create a new nest. So they're pretty bloody clever, and the drones take longer to make than the, than the queens, so they make them first. So, they're getting psyched up. This box is probably definitely going to swarm with the amount of population it's got going on. There's a little drone going, so he would have been an overwinter drone, or he might have hatched early. So, it's a bit cold for him to do a mating flight yet anyway. So this might be getting excited, this one. All right. Keep an eye on this one where we find a queen cell and then we'll be all on for young and money. There'll be all sorts of bloody excitement going on. We'll come out here and the bloody things will be hanging in the tree. Wow, this box is going to explode very soon. Isn't it? Going to go off its tits as the saying would go. We're getting some feedback because people are not 100% sure what some of our slang words mean. So I thought, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's just how it comes out here in Oz. You just start talking and... You don't really overthink it too much. But that's a bit like most of the shit we do, we don't overthink it too much. So, what was I just saying then? Off your tits, which is pretty much drunk as a skunk, similar similar thing. Um, what's that, the servo? Down the servo is where you go and get your petrol. And over in America they're fries. In England I think they're chips as well, not instead of crisps. But we can be, we're a bit slack, so we can have crisps that are crunchy, that are, we call them chips as well as hot chips. So of course we have to make the distinction and say we'll get some hot chips or we'll get some chips from the shop, from the shoopy market. <laughs> We're um, just checking out, we've just done a bit of an overview on, uh, not, we haven't checked every single hive here, but I'm just sort of seeing how far along they are. They all seem to be about at the, just about getting the drones hatched thing. So they haven't made any queen cells that I've found. So we've probably got another couple of weeks before we have to get too excited. And plus it's not quite the best weather for mating flights. So I'm not going to split these until, well I don't know, probably until the lad comes back in a couple of weeks time. 
So I'm guessing you want to come along for the, the ride of the splitting of the hive? 